Good morning and welcome to our Live Talk program. This is Lloyd Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our Live Talk program covering um, Wisdom for Living on your Friday morning rise and shine, Wisdom for Living this morning here. And we're looking at, again, we're still in Proverbs chapter 21, and we're looking at dealing with a brawling, contentious woman or man. Dealing with a brawling person. This is what we're looking at here, a brawling, contentious person. So welcome again to your Live Talk program. Um, Hopefully you had a blessing that resting ready to take on today. Let us pray. Our Father, our heaven, we thank you again for the wisdom that you bless us with. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and pray that you may continue to lead us into paths of righteousness that we might receive the blessings, honor, and um, the good life that you promised to us. May you be with us, dear Lord, as we continue to walk humbly before thee. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So here this morning we're looking at dealing with a brawling, contentious woman. Or man. Um, either way, dealing with a brawling person is what we're looking at here this morning as we do this live talk program. And we pick up this thought here in Proverbs chapter chapter 21, verse 9. Proverbs 21, verse 9. And it says here, it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. And also in Proverbs 21, again, verse 19, it says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. So, um, two verses there. I have some more to share. As I said, it's dealing with both men, man or woman. So, this idea here is something that we see often deal with, um, probably live with, or lived with, depends on our situation. And it is this... Um, issue here of trying to um, deal with, um, live with, um, survive somebody that is very contentious or very brawling. And so when you're trying to survive this person or live with this person, the question is, what do you do? How do you handle it? So this is why my topic again here is dealing with a brawling, contentious woman or man. Um, normally with man, they're contentious, but it, the Bible later on I'll read um, we'll add the similar word angry, um, which is the third word they're used um, in verse 19. Um, because the persons have anger issue, they get very upset very easily. They're like on an edge and it's easy to set them off or they just set off already and then they set other people off. And so how do you deal with the situation? So uh, let's start back again with Proverbs 21 verse 19. Proverbs 21 verse um, 9, sorry. So Proverbs 21 verse 9 says, It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop right, than, to, than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Uh, the word brawl means fight or quarrel in a rough or, or nice, noisy way. So um, to fight or quarrel in a rough or noisy way. So it is better to deal, to live in the corner of, uh, of the housetop. So you think about a housetop. And um, if they also have an attic or if there's just probably, I'm assuming there's an attic there because you're going to be able to go in there. And it's, it's, the Bible is saying it's better to live not in the middle of the housetop um, because probably uh, the shouting that she's doing is going to, you know, penetrate through the middle better. So it's just better to go into the corner, have a little space and live in a little, you know, tiny little enclosure, probably in somebody else's house, probably not your house. Um, and live in there, you, you just have peace. You're like, ah, oh, man, it so feels so good to not have to deal with that. Um, and just, and that's all you have. And somebody said, man, what happened to you? You look happy, but I hear you having it rough. You're living in the corner of John's house stop. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm so happy up there. So this is what the Bible is saying. The person is just better to go right on ahead and move into just a little, little cramp space you know, where, you know, they have a, you know, what they call it, a laugh or something. And a person all of a sudden saw blossom and bear flower and they look so happy um, just by escaping this type of brawling. So the word boil is a quarrel or fight in a rough or noisy way. So, you know, normally whatever, you know, say so there's a problem and you start trying to say to the person, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 all right, all right, all right, okay, calm down. Because, you know, whatever the problem is that a person is upset with you about, the neighbors is about to hear. 
um, uh, she's going to blare it so loud that the neighbors will hear. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, ca ca calm down now. Um, because man is going to go on, on blast. Um, and this can be true not just in a house setting, but now that we have social media and we have the various different ways um, to do this, then you can find people, whether it be on social media or on YouTube or any different type of media that they'll just go ahead and take the dirty laundry and hanging out. Say, look, here's some underwear or here's some panties or whatever. I'm going to show you. It. You all can see the dirty underwear. And they just kind of air it out there um, for everybody to see. And then you see the person doing it and they're, they're justifying what they're doing. And at first you'll be like, wow, man, they, they, they're they living with some, you know, their spouse is so horrible or the kids are so horrible. And then you start to pull back, you start realizing, oh, it's not the spouse and the kids is horrible, it's just the, it's just the person's personality. They, they, it takes them nothing to set them off. So the Bible simply says it's just better to just go right in the head and just go find some house stop somewhere and be at peace. Um, so that's what it is because the person is just always rough and noisy, and loud, always quarreling and fighting, and it's just it's just the person. So what we're gonna do this morning here? We're gonna talk about some ways to deal with that because it's, it can be dealt with, um, but you have to know how to, what to do. Well, right in the Bible, just give you an intimation, move into a house stop, and get away from it. That's one way. Proverbs twenty one verse nineteen now. A little further down in the past in the paragraph it says here it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman now i love this word here wilderness used in this context because again contentious um the word contentious first let me read what the word contentious mean causing or likely to cause or an argument so it's it's there's arguments and normally you have an argument is two people arguing. But the source or the cause of the argument is the person. Now, now somebody say, but Lloyd, you're ignoring the fact that there's dirty laundry. And all the person is arguing about is, why do you leave your dirty drawers on the floor? But it's, it's the, the argument is going to start and there's a source for the argument. Now, one person might say the source of the argument is the dirty drawers, you know, the dirty laundry. Um, and this, all the person is doing is just airing it so that the loud enough so that the neighbors can hear to probably embarrass the, the husband so the husband stop leaving his drawers on the floor. So that's one way to look at it. Um, and that's, I think, normally from the point of view of the contentious person. They're just saying, oh, I'm just hearing it because I want everybody to hear so I can shame him and to stop dropping his underwear on the floor. And, you know, I'm using underwear in the colloquial speaking of people always say your ear, your hair, your ear, your dirty laundry, you take it out. Instead of hanging out clean clothes, you take the dirty clothes and put it on the line and air it out. You don't really do that. You know, the only thing I know people would air out or sun out <laughs> is like a, a child wet in a bed. You take the mattress and put it out in the sun so the sun can bake the urine in. Anyhow, so you, you air it. You don't air clean, you don't air dirty laundry, you air out clean laundry you take the clean stuff and air it out at least that's the way i understand it there's probably a better explanation for that phrase <laughs> so a contentious person now will view it from that point of view they'll say well it's because of the dirty laundry i'm just telling everybody about the dirty laundry but they don't realize no what you're doing is causing an argument and you're going to cause a big controversy so the controversy is with them, they're the source of it. You have to know who is the source of the great controversy, so to speak. You know, who is the source? There's a controversy and two people are fighting, but who is causing the trouble? Who brought the trouble on? And the moment you realize who brought the trouble on, you realize it's not necessarily the two people fighting are equally to be blamed. You have to blame the person who like to cause the controversy and air the dirty laundry and start the accusation. Like, don't, don't start none and there be none. Don't bring it on. If you bring it to me, then I might give it to you. And you might be like, why are you beating me? Because you brought it. So it's better to dwell now in the... So, oh, so contention, contentious is causing or likely to cause arguments. So this is a source or controversy. And it is reference to a person 
given to arguing or provoking argument. So here it is the person provoking it. So something happened and the way the person deals with it now is that there is going to end up in an argument. Whatever happened is going to end up in an argument. And they're going to say, well, I'm just standing for what is right. No, you're provoking contention. You're provoking argument. It's that is not the issue. It's the argument. And that's the biggest thing to me in dealing with a person. It's the most difficult thing to get through to a contentious person. It, it sometimes seems impossible to explain to them. Yes, you're focused on the issue, but the issue is not the problem. The individual incident is not a problem. It's your behavior is a problem. And is is that a person can see that because it's such a difficult um, for them at least it's a difficult concept to grasp that the individual occurrence of wrong or perceived slight or words that was interpreted a certain way is not a problem. Probably something didn't happen wrong, but why has it be, be end up in a brawl or in a contentious contentious situation? Why has it be a controversy? Why everything has to be a fight. The problem is your attitude towards issues. When something comes up, you don't have to end in a fight. You don't have to deal with it in that way. You don't have to go and tell the neighbors. That's on all on you. Stuff happens in life all the time. So causing contention is, is, is what this is. So go back to verse 19 now. Proverbs 21 verse 19. Look at this now. It says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Can we think about a wilderness? You say a wilderness is a place where there's nothing there. It is a howling wilderness. All you hear is whoo, nothing. And you'd be like, wow, we don't hear a voice. And in my mind, always when you hear a wilderness, there's a wind blowing. And then there's silence. And then every now and then you hear a wolf. I can't do a wolf sound. Anyhow, so a wolf will make a howl or something, whatever wolves do. And then you hear nothing again. And you'd be like, man, it's silent. So... Uh, Proverbs here, beautifully put, is giving the absence of that noise. Say, look at that. And you see, but nobody would, nobody in their right mind. You go to a 20-year-old and you say, hey man, you're young, you're coming up in life, you're excited about life, you're looking to get your career, get, you know, your spouse, get your, you know, your wife, get your kids, get all of that. Wow, you're looking forward to life, right? And you say to them, would you consider living in the wilderness? And they'll be like, what are you talking about? I want, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to life. I'm excited about life. I'm looking forward to, you know, going places, doing things. Why would I just withdraw myself from society and go live in the wilderness? And as a person at 20, you're like, he'd be like, and then he, you know, you'd say you're asking the question. You say, yeah, but it'll be a great. You'll be able to have silence. You'll be in the wilderness and you'll be able to have peace in your soul. You will not be able to, you know, just, you know, just be able to like, ah, and just relax and just have no noise, no sound. And they'll be like, okay, you're crazy. And they're gone. Then they go ahead and they got married, get the career, get the kids, but they end up married to a contentious woman. And then you see them 20 years later. I used to, I used to say, hey, what's going on with you, man? You're now 40. Life went good, right? And they said, well, you know, I did all the things I was designed to do, but I ended up with a contentious woman. And I decided to not to, just to leave and disappear. And I'm now living in the wilderness by myself. And all oh, the peace. <laughs> and that's basically to me what he's saying here. It is better to live. But, you know, at 20, you can't explain that to a 20 year old. You know, they see somebody and they say, well, she's pretty. She's contentious, but she's pretty. And you'll be like, brother, you don't know what you get yourself into. You will flee from society when you are finished just to get peace. Because it's going to be rough. Because you're going to, you're not going to know, you're, you're going to be tortured every single day. Every day you get up, this person going to torture you. And you'll be like, just, just, you know, just, just, I don't want to see human beings <laughs> after this is done. So it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. So it's just, give me the wilderness over Somebody that is just frothing at the mouth all the time and always mad about something and always trying to say, yeah, there's a reason. I saw a fly and the person started going after the fly. I'm like, just kill a fly, get a fly to the misery <laughs> and stop arguing with the fly. But that's just the whole idea. So it is 
the, the, the Bible continues with this. So this is where the contentious. Now, notice again, my topic is dealing with a brawling, contentious woman or man. Now, you find this um, man added to this idea here in Proverbs, Proverbs 26, verse 21. And to me, what Proverbs 26, verse 21 teaches is that a contentious person, male or female, does not come by, by the contention does not come by accident. It's the person is the source. Notice here, Proverbs 26, verse 21, teaches us one principle, um, that it doesn't come by chance. It's not that says, you know, say if you're arguing with somebody all the time, you have to pull back and say, wait a minute. I deal with, say, if you deal with, say, 30 people in your life on a regular basis. Um, uh, so 30 people you deal with, you call someone on the phone, you text somebody. But this is one person that you always have arguments with. You have to start saying, wait a minute, this is kind of an anomaly. This person always have argument. And then probably some of you go talk to other people, you realize, oh, they have arguments with this person. And so I realize it's not the issue, is the problem, is the person argumentative behavior. Notice here in verse 21 of Proverbs 26, it says, As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. See that? So is a contentious man to kindle strife. See, it's the contentious person that spark it, that cause that light. See, you're a human being and I'm a human being. So, we, we have the same type of functionality that God downloaded in us the moment, you know, we, we are, you know, we, whatever, at whatever point, whatever in the fetus. So, imagine now, so you can be kindled. None of us are being kindled. Nobody uh, is being, being provoked, being enticed, being sucked in to somebody else's spirit so if this person have a contentious spirit you're not immune from it and you'll get sucked in the next you know you're doing there saying stuff that you realize you just got sucked into a little evil door so as a cold to burn in cold so the cold is not burning but the contentious person is burning or sorry the person who is going to get into the contention with the other person they're not in contention they're not angry but the moment you come around a contentious man, it says here, you're going to start arguing and you're going to start getting mad because the person is pulling you in. And then somebody will say, well, but you got mad. Yeah, because I'm a human being. I have feelings. Uh, God made me with the ability to smile, laugh, to get angry, to have emotion. So now I start arguing back and you start realizing, wait a minute. I was, I wasn't like that before. I was not I wasn't even thinking like that. Why, why am I arguing? Because you realize the person brought it. Something happened, you're like, oh no, don't worry about it. I'm so, I'm sorry, I apologize. And the person like, oh no, apology is not good enough. We're gonna argue over this. And then you start arguing, you're like, man, you gotta get a hold of yourself. So you always have to remind yourself that it is the source. There's a there's something that's on fire. And it's it's gonna light everybody around him. So, uh, as coal are to burning coals, and wood to fire. Because if you have a fire, and you don't put no wood in the fire, fire is going to go out. So, people trying to pull you into an argument, or trying to pull you into their anger, or their contentious spirit. And you have to know, there's a source, and you have to start seeing that person for who they are. So that's one of the ways to deal with it. You have to start seeing and say, ah, oh, I get you. Wherever you come around, fight break out. Contention. Because with men, with women, it's a lot of bickering and talking and running their mouth. With men, they do a lot of, you know, they want to fist and fight and stuff like that. And so you start to realize, you, and you I'm sure you dealt with this when you were, as you're coming up in life, you have friends and stuff in school that you're forced to be in a building with them because you have to go to school and you start realizing, oh man, they're always in fights. And then you start to observe that they talk certain things and they say certain things. And then, it, you know, somebody's fighting with them and they act as if the fight is justified. And you start realizing, no, it's not justified. You caused that fight because of what you're saying. 
then somebody start arguing and next you know two, two people start punching each other and then you start realizing oh yeah the other person was fighting and they're gonna get punished but you know you saw as your friend caused the fight he's a real troublemaker and it's important for you to know that because that's how you deal with that because then you start to realize you either talk to the person or back off away from them if they don't want to readjust because they're the contentious person they kindle the strife and they suck people in the next thing you know so you see two people fighting you're like man this person do it again they keep pulling people into their fights because they want to fight so it is the the source you got to know the source you got to know who's doing it and all of a sudden you realize there's no fixing this problem because there's no trying to you know if two people fight you're trying to counsel two people you don't counsel two people there's, there's a source you just you know because it's it's just we're immune we're not immune from getting angry so you got to deal with the source and until that source is dealt with you'll never fix the problem because that person keep bringing it and they keep saying oh yeah but i have a reason why i bring it you know i have a reason that this is the reason why i'm no brother this is something wrong with you and, and this is one of the things where i realized real quickly where even as i say you can just go on youtube and you find you, just, uh, you this will probably wouldn't work but just angry people and you just start seeing video after video of people dealing with issue with politics or dealing with issue with and after a while you realize um it's not so much politics as an issue or is um nature you know like are they trying to preserve nature or they try to save the animals or it's just they're angry they're just always angry about everything and then they get into controversy and they're just always looking for fights looking to stir the pot and stir people and you know that's all they're doing and you realize real quickly they're angry and then after a while you start realizing oh they're not only angry when the camera is rolling they're angry off camera they realize that their family have a horrible time living with them because these are some angry men and they're just looking for contention but if a person always in that mode and that spirit then they bring the contention home and they always fight it and they always make it seem like, well, probably it's their wife's fault or probably it's their friend's fault or the society's fault. And only to realize it's their fault. You know, you see that young lady um, early in the week went over to YouTube and shoot up the place. Wounded seriously some people and or a few people and end up killing herself. And then some people are saying they're not even sure. They need to go investigate her to see if she had it sex change and it's really a man in there and because now normally the men will make that extra step um to go shoot up the place and anything is possible but normally you see action and uh, you normally know a woman will ask you just constant argument constant argument a guy will be arguing but next you know you're going to turn to strife notice there at the end of verse 21 so is a contentious man to kindle strife they're going to be war and you realize the fight is not with the people that's fighting back. It's just that person. They just, you know, they just go, they go on Twitter and it's just pure fight. They go, it's just pure. And you think, oh, they're doing things to make America great again. No, it's just this an angry person. And the angry person just bring out people to fight back. And then you, you're fighting back and you're like, why am I? And you're like, no, it's not really you. It's just that person. And a lot, a lot, as long as that person is there, there will be fights. Because that's the person's personality the fights you know you, you you can deal with issue without a fight and that's important you can deal with issues without a fight but when you have an angry person you can't deal with issues without a fight because the persons want to fight they don't want to fix anything they just really want to fight because they like a fight because it, that's their mode of dealing now not important thing in dealing with um what we call now a contentious brawling woman or man is um proverbs 27 verse 15 through 17 proverbs 27 verse 15 through 17 and you have to remember the person has a tortured mind so a person you're dealing with that is contentious that's just the way they think and whatever contention they bring to you you have to remember they had probably 10 more in their heads and they're just like angry you can just see them just grasping stuff and holding it real tight with their teeth clench and their fists clench and they're biting hard and they're pulling at everything because that's their mind the mindset is like they're constipated and probably you know that's the reality too because their mindset is so angry 
because they're just angry about everything and about life. So you have to remember that the person you're dealing with has a tortured mindset. They're tortured and tortured themselves. Also, they must be the person now also must be brought to this reality that you know, and you have to encourage them to be desirous of not torturing themselves. They have to want it. Now, that to me is the biggest thing in dealing with somebody that's angry and contentious. They have to want it. Because if they don't want it, you can't. You can pray all you want, which is good. You can, but God is desire. You always remember when you pray that God is more desirous of a good outcome than yourself. And God was more, God was, how would I say this? God is already aware of the problem. God already sent his Holy Spirit to deal with the problem. Is angels a little problem? So you you have to first even you know before you start praying, remind yourself that that before you start praying, when you discover the problem, God already knew the problem long before you discovered it. So you dealt with a per you start dealing with a person. You realize, man, this person is tortured, a tortured mindset. What a way to think! This is the way this this is the way this person get up every day and think. Wow, that would be like I'll just have a headache. But then you say, I need to pray for this person. But but just before you pray for the person, you have to remember now when you approach God that you're you're coming to the realization of something that God already know. You're not gonna inform God of something and tell him for the first time, and God's gonna be like, Wow, really? So Mary is like contentious. You know, God already knows this. You just be you just caught up. To what God has been dealing with and fighting with via the Holy Spirit. So then you have to take, you have to pray, but you have to pray and say, God, I just realized this. I'm just seeing this. And the next thing you have to do is ask God, is there a way to, for me to help? And one of the ways I believe that for you to help, because I just say, God is working, God does not sleep. The Holy Spirit has been working on the person, the angel is working, you know, some things happen into the person's life. You have to notice that things have happened to, in the person's life that was whipping them and beating them to stop it. Circumstantial situation happened that God providential leading to make them even hurt themselves by this contentious thing. Because you see where people are contentious, people whip them, make them punch them in the face and stuff like that. So you have to notice. So when you approach a person, you have to know that the person is not only torturing themselves, but they probably have been tortured before. People have probably tied them up and beat them and police arrest them and step on them and all kind of stuff like that because they like to run their mouth. So when you approach them, you approach them in a point of your faith, knowing that God is already there before you got there. So whatever you're going to say, you need to pray more about what God can do in you to help that person. Because if you go there thinking, oh, you're going to tell God something new, like, trust me, Spirit of God been on that person, fighting with that person for years, trying to get them to come. And when you approach people like that, you'll be surprised how quickly a person will say to you, you know, I'm really miserable because I know what I'm doing, but I can't stop myself. Very important. And you find this all the time. So that person must be desirous of not torturing himself. Notice I didn't say they must be desirous of not torturing himself or torturing others. That's the second point. They must also be desirous of not torturing people around them. And they must want to stop. This is where the first step in recovery, because the person needs recovery, is the person needs to have confession. They need to acknowledge that they have a problem. And you're only there to try to help them along this line and to encourage them, because they already know they need to. You just need to encourage them, really. You need to, you need to want this. You need to really want to stop torturing yourself first. Secondly, others. Because you have to stop torturing yourself. If you don't desire this, you will never stop. Notice here in Proverbs 27, verse 15 through 17, we find all this concept here wrapped up in Proverbs 27, 15 through 17. Notice it says here, A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. So a continuous dropping just never stops. You're like, oh, please. You know, they, they, they have this thing that I've, I think I've seen it, I've not seen it. But anyway, it's called a Chinese water, water torture. I've heard people talk about it, where basically they drip water on you on a certain spot in your body until you go crazy. It literally drives you crazy. 
and there goes all all the stuff you know the bible talks about christ makes it very clear that except for um adultery one can't get a divorce um but this is one of those things that blows the mind because a person like this could cause you to go mental ill because they're probably having some mental illness themselves so the question that always come up in my mind is if a person is in a situation where their spouse is going to make them go mad what did they, should they do it's always a difficult question because that person could drive you mentally ill because they're mentally ill they just have never acknowledged the fact that they have a mental illness so a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. You just keep trip, 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 trip. Never stop. And you're like, man, I'm so tired of living in this house. Every day it rains. It's just leak, leak, leak. You're laying on your bed next to you, you know. You wake up and you're almost drowning. Only realize that water was dripping in your mouth. <laughs> All the time you're gargling with water. Uh, it's just annoying. And it's that annoyance that leads people to that. It's like a tortured existence. So it's important when dealing with a person now to encourage them, please, to stop torturing yourself. You're killing yourself. Uh, verse 26. Whoso, whosoever hided her, hide it the wind and the ointment of his hand and the ointment of his right hand, which bereared it, itself or betrayed itself so the ointment of the right hand betrayed itself in other words um, i'm gonna give you some other words read verse 17 now it says iron sharpened at iron so a man sharpened at the countenance of his friend notice there a man sharpened the countenance of the friend so if you have some friends and you look sharp you're like man you know if i see you and you look sharp that's all i need to say sorry if i see you and you look sharp i say wow man you must have some good friends they're sharpening you man you look sharp not about physical sharpness in the sense of the clothing you can dress very sharp but you look depressed in your face you look like you've been beaten down so i said man who is your friend man you look if you look sharp in your face then i'm telling you you have good friends so it is when you run into a person like you could run into many times a guy or a woman and I see this all the time. I see a female and they look, they look beaten down. You see a guy, they look beaten down. And you know the source of that is their spouse. Because the person is so contentious and angry that the person is just tortured. And just, you can see it printed on their face. Like, I am tortured. And, and you're like, oh man, the person just dulled the person because it's just constantly dripping. It's constantly fight. Now, Proverbs 27 verse 16 so whosoever hided her, hided the wind, and the ointment of the right, um, and the ointment of his right hand, which berereth, um, berereth uh, itself. Now this verse here is translated in a few different ways. I'm gonna take four different translation to give you a better idea of what it's talking about here. Now in Proverbs 27 verse 16, New Living Translation renders it: Stopping her complaints is like trying to stop the wind. Are trying to hold something with a greased hands or with greased hands so he, here here goes now so the question is now how do you deal with a person it's saying that you can't stop that person if that person doesn't desire to stop themselves any effort of yourself is you know that you're gonna make uh, a husband trying to make to stop her is wasting his time this is a total waste of time because the person have a desire to stop they have to say I have a problem until they see that and they don't they stop saying oh this happened or that happened that's why i'm so angry it never work stopping her complaints because she's just complaining always bringing complaint i've been in situation where i've known people for years and nobody complains to them you you, you know you don't even because if you complain to them they start complaining that you're complaining to them <laughs> it's unreal all this thing can get out of control in the person's mind and yet they will bring complaints after complaints. And you say, what is that complaint? And you'll be like, you complain about that? And the person complain, complain, complain. Always something about complaining. And it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. It, it, I guess it, it is, the Bible referred to, I think, male probably once in the situation, you know, or twice. And there's another text that says, don't be friends with an angry man. But it seemed to more talk about the female in that situation. But I think both you can find 
both male or female, just very angry, very, you know, like they have a chip on the shoulder. I think a lot of the mass murders, that's what it is. It's just mad. And it just, you can't stop it. So notice, stopping their complaints is like trying to stop the wind. When the wind starts blowing, very just nothing you can do is wind. You know, you see a storm coming. Uh, all it is is just a bunch of wind and it's going to just knock trees down and tear stuff up. You try to stop it. You can't put up a barrier against it. You blow the barrier down. You're nothing you can do. And this is written, this is why I love the Bible. And this is why simpletons hate the Bible because see what happened here. This is written how much thousands of years ago, probably 3,000 or so. So here's a book written how much thousand years ago. A statement is written like that. And after 3,000 years, probably plus, it probably about 3,000 years there or so, no man has ever proven this wrong. This is what people don't understand with the Bible that talks foolishly against it. It's, it's, it's because of it's so old. Just think about it. How many men have been in this situation with a complaining wife and say, you know, and they have lived and died, lived and died, and read and read. Millions of people have read this, and not one of them have ever fixed this problem. Unless that person desire to stop the complaining, not, you can't stop it. So he says, stopping our complaints is like trying to stop the wind. You're wasting your time. That person, your only thing you can do is encourage a person, please. Get a hold of yourself. You can't try to get a hold of them. Because they're going to start complaining that you're trying to control them. So you can't win. You're bossing them. You're trying to whatever. So everything you do is going to be a complaint. And there's going to be another reason to complain. Because it's a, it's a, it's a madness. Notice again, or trying to hold something with a greased hand. You ever try to do this? It does not work. You grease your hand up. And you try to hold it. just slip right in your hand. And that's what it is. We're trying to restrain somebody with this type of behavior. You just slip right in your hand. Notice, whole man, Christian standard Bible renders it. The one who control her, uh, the one who, sorry, the one who controls her, controls um, the wind and grasp, um, and grasp oil with his hand, with his right hand, right? It is, you can't hold it. It, it is just going to just keep slipping through. It, it's just, you don't, you know, you, they normally say water is unstable. Wind is even more unstable. Uh, I've sometimes sit and try to observe like weather, the weather people trying to predict the weather and they can get it very close. But you can see the weather changes pattern within eight hours. They'll make a prediction in the morning even to change the prediction. And you say, why is that so? It's so hard to predict because you're trying to predict the movement of wind primarily. You can't predict it. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. And this is why I think people are so depressed when they're around people who are c complainers. Because you don't know when it's going to hit you. But you know it's going to hit. Because it's so unstable. It's not. It's worse than water. Because as I said, water is unstable. But at least you can contain it. You can't contain wind. You can't contain it. It's harder to. This is why you have so much regulations when it comes out to gas. Any type of gas. Because you blow up on you, you, you don't even know what hit you because it's just hard to. Notice the contemporary English version renders it. It is easier to catch the wind or hold olive oil in your in your hand than to stop a nagging wife. You think about that. You you can come up with methodologies, as I say, to hold gas, liquid petroleum, and all that stuff. And the Bible is saying it's easier to actually do that than to try to try to stop or to, uh, what it says here, stop a nagging wife. It's just nagging. Everything is a problem. Man, fix it yourself. Oh, you need to fix this thing. Why you don't get a screwdriver and go fix it yourself? Leave me alone. You know, and, and that becomes the issue. Also, English Standard Version, English Standard Version says, to restrain her is to restrain the wind and to grasp oil in one's right hand. And you know it don't work. It starts to drip down on the back of your hand. And it just starts to mess up everywhere. You know, oil is hard to clean. So it's just, it's just a mess. And so how to deal with that is to realize that you have to encourage a person. Get a hold of yourself. Your nagging is, is, is the problem. And you probably have to tell the person a thousand times before they wake up to, wait a minute, you're saying it's not the, it's not the issues? No, it's you, you nag, nagger. You're nagging. And this is where some people say sometimes the best thing to do in that situation is just to have a legal separation, just to separate for a little bit and get away from the person. 
Um, probably we need the wilderness by themselves. They'll figure it out. Here's some of the texts that are important to our discussion here. So one of the things that is important to do when helping a person or trying to deal with a person that's a nagger, complainer, contentious person, a brawling person, um, is in Proverbs 22, verse 10. Proverbs 22, verse 10 says, Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So cast out the scorner. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why I think um, lots of the contention happen with a contentious, nagging person is they like to be very judgmental and critical. And the Bible described them here as scornful. This is what, to me, what is the source of a contentious person. So it's important to encourage a person. And me here talking to you, I'll be encouraged if say you had this problem, um, is don't be so quick to disparage um, uh, um, somebody else's idea, another person's idea or plan. Don't be so scornful to it. Because normally when you think about scornful, you think about somebody don't want to sit in a seat, as the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, when you sit in it because they think you're disgusting. Um, and so the person... It's not your discussing per se, it's just the personal attitude is just horrible, have a, a, a terrible personality. But here it says it says the person is scorn scorner. So you say scorner just has to do with physical, but scornful I cannot be um verbal or intellectual or mental. You have an idea the person starts scorning because you can't come up with an idea because you're dumb. And this is what a big problem I think is causing this to become such a rampant problem also in our society. Because it, I think in the media, men are portrayed sometimes or often as dumb. Just stupid. Stupid guy. Stupid male. And so when a female have that attitude, she's scornful to his ideas and whatever he's going to say. And when a person is scornful to you, they'll make you know. Because you see it in their face. You can see their face going and you're like, wow, I just said something the person just start, yuck, you know. And it wasn't something because of you physically, but because everything you say is yuck. And it's scornful. Yucky, that's yucky. And But they're yucky to whatever you say. So when now that person now scorn like that, contentious start but they say oh you're contending with me because of whatever but the contention is because they're scornful it is you say something and they say oh that's so dumb oh that's stupid no that's wrong oh that will not work oh that's foolish oh that and then now the argument start so don't be so quick to disparage others ideas or plan don't be scornful to it actually one of the best way to fix this is actually to not be yuck, you know, everything is yuck, everything is dumb, it's foolish, it's nonsense. So the Bible simply says, cast out, uh, out the scorner and content shall, shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease, male or female, it doesn't matter. Person, as I said, they shoot down your plans, they shoot down your idea. But it's not, you're not, so now you start to defend, but you're not defending the idea what you're defending is the scornful behavior. But the person will say, oh no, they're just, diff you know, you, you, you disagree. So that disagreement is just the behavior. And this is why fights happen because people can be very scornful. And so you say, hey, let's go to the left. And they say, they don't say, why? This is to me one of the biggest things you teach a scorner to ask. Why? They don't say, why? They say, that's dumb. Why are you going to the left? Like, what? You, 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 you're supposed to not say that's dumb. You're supposed to say, why are you going to the left? Why do you have to add in? That's dumb. That's where the problem start. And the moment you have that problem, boom, there's an explosion. And the person says, why are you exploding? I'm exploding because you killed me. And that's important to note. And you have this type of strife all the time where a person says something angry. Normally, I remember growing up, it would be a situation where Somebody, a guy, would say something angry to a guy. The difference with a guy now, uh, the two guys would just start fighting. Because I say something to you, say something to me. But whatever I said to you, trigger you. And you get mad with me, you just start fighting. Because those are fighting words. The difference with a female now, they go back and forth. And they argue with each other. But sometimes you have it where why it becomes such a problem and so important. Because 
there are some guys that are so out of control or they're so easily ticked off, so to speak, that a female not come with this scornful behavior and they just start punching and kicking them. And then that's now abuse. But what it is is that you don't provoke people and you don't get them to anger. The Bible is very clear about that. Don't be provoking people. But one of the ways to provoke people is to be scornful. So notice the Bible's solution again in Proverbs 1 to deal with a scornful situation is you don't sit in their seat. You avoid them. But how do you avoid somebody you're married to? It becomes very problematic because then you always have to have a house with two bathrooms. So imagine you're married to your spouse and your spouse is very scornful. And you're like, oh man, I can't sit on the toilet now because she scorns me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get another toilet because now I can't sit in the person's seat. And so forth and so on. Because everything you do is just a bother. Everything is a bother. And you realize the problem is a person. So important to note, cast out a scorner, contention will go away. Yeah, strife and reproach will cease. And the moment the person is scornful, and I see it over and over again, a scornful person, a person that's, that's, let's use all the words now, a person that is contentious, a person that's a nagger, a person that is angry, a person that is um, easily ticked off, a person that um, is all the words that we use there, a person that is a brawler, the moment the person absents, abs the moment the person is absent, everything is peaceful. It's like a miracle. It's like the wilderness came. It's like you were living in a metro area or in a suburban area and it's just pure fights. And then the person is absent and it's, you feel like, man, it's feel like the wilderness. All of a sudden, you feel like you can't hear the, the howling wind and the wolves, you know, bellowing or whatever the wolves do. And you'll be like, wow, this feels like a wilderness. Why? Because the scorner left, the complainer left, the dagger left. You can't control that. And so it's important to know the reproach will cease. And I've seen it over and over again. And obviously, you realize, always when the person is not around, peace comes. The person comes, war comes. It's not the issues they're dealing with. It's they that needs to say, I need help. I need Jesus Christ to help me. Because if the Christ doesn't help them, the person doesn't say, you know, Lord, your spirit has been nagging me, so to speak. Or the spirit has been striving with me to stop it. I'm going to submit to you, Holy Spirit. This person is in a bind for the rest of their life because they keep explaining to people there's a reason for it, but there's always a reason. There's always something to nag about and complain about because life always has something that needs to be fixed. There's always something that needs to be cleaned in your house. There's going to be always something that needs to be fixed. There's always going to be a knob that needs to be tightened. There's always going to be a switch that needs to be replaced. There's always going to be a shingle that needs to be replaced. There's always going to be a crack somewhere in the driveway, a crack somewhere, somewhere. Uh, you could keep going. There's always going to be something that never get done immediately. It's always going to be the wrong time to get something done. You know, there's certain things that you want to get done, but you can't get it done in the spring. There's some things you want to get done, it's best to get it done in the fall. There's something, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And so there's always going to be something. There's always going to be some time where you're tired and you decide, you know what I've been tonight? I'm going to leave the dishes in the in the sink. I'm going to go to bed. I'm exhausted. Tonight, I'm, you know, I'm not going to put away, as I say, my drawers. I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm just going to go to bed. There's always going to be a time for something. There's always a time where you're so sick and tired that you you could pull up, you know, in front of your house and take a nap in your car. <laughs> you're just so exhausted that you can't even get up to open the door to walk in the house. You're, you're going to just pull up in front of the house and just knock right out and probably fall asleep for two hours, just exhausted. And then you get up and go into your house. And when you go into your house now, imagine you have a nagging person. A nagging person started attacking you. I started to tell you all kind of reasons why you did that. I started to complain and accuse you of why you felt. And all you did was just tired. And all you want to do at that point is just turn around, go back in your car and leave and never come back. Or some people just go, find a gun and put it to their head. I said, no more of this. And then that girl would be like, oh, he was a weak person. But yeah, you just destroy the person's mind. Break it down to the point a person doesn't want to live anymore. So it's important to understand that. To understand that when you're driving people to their just craziness, you need to lay off them. So content just shall go out. Yeah, strife shall go out. And as I say, I've seen it so often. And reproach shall cease. 
somebody's on the run and more and the situation blossoms and bear fruit and just beautiful. Why? Because the person has brought so much contention and quarreling, knocking. Um, another solution to the problem is found in Proverbs 13, verse 10. Proverbs 13, verse 10 states there that only by pride come a contention, but with the well advice is wisdom. Read it one more time. Beautiful here. Just absolute beautiful. Only by pride come at contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. These are like um, comparison. Notice here the person that is contentious, nagging, complaining, blah, blah. They're prideful. Pride is really the seat of this issue, full of themselves. And it might not be picked up at first, but that's the issue. Pride is enthroned on the heart. The person is humble. But notice the flip of that is, but with the well-advised is wisdom. What is a well-advised person? A person that is willing to be advised. You see the beauty of that? You catch that? See, a person that is prideful, you can't talk to them. And I've never met a contentious person that you can talk to. You, you, you can't even get a word in. That's how terrible the person is. Because they already, they already have no information and came to a conclusion. This is how I look at it. They have no information, but they have already came to a conclusion. And then they're going to start to attack based upon that ignorance. And that's not a humble. You see, a humble way is to ask why. Why? That's humility. But pride is, oh, I know it. So I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. You're going to tell me I'm wrong. You didn't even know what I just said. You didn't even listen to what I just said. How are you talking so fast? See, pride. But the person don't know that they're prideful. Because, you see, a prideful person always wants to critique and question and analyze and never ask. Why? Because they're full of themselves. Because they think their opinion is, I'm going to tell you how it's supposed to go. You're going to tell me how it's going to go. You don't know nothing about what I'm doing. You don't even know what I, where I'm going, what I'm saying. So look, only by pride come in. Somebody said, wait a minute, how can the Bible say only? Because that's what I'm telling you. You take a person that is contentious, angry. Ang Think about it. Anger and stupidity or ignorance or being a foolish person goes hand in hand. You know, they always say you have to be careful with a bunch of angry people in a, in a crowd or a bunch of ignorant people in a crowd. Why? Because ignorant people are always angry. Uh, you put them together, oh, they're foaming at the mount, pitchforks and, 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 and torches. And you say, wow. I guarantee many times what you saw in history where you have these mobs and stuff, you might think, oh, but these people really are, are bright. No, they're prideful and they're stupid. And that's why they do the things they do. But you get caught up because you say, but the person has a PhD. You're yeah, stupid as ever. Uh, there's be people with very good memory that can pass tests all the time. But you talk to them, you're like, what kind of crazy person is this? Because the pride make them not seek to humbly learn and to investigate, they already come to their conclusion. A person that's quick to come to conclusion and wear the emotion on their sleeves, watch that person. You always find fights among them. So it's important to encourage a person. You need to humble yourself. You need to sh just get keep quiet for a little bit. Stop talking. You need to stop coming to conclusion. You need to stop thinking the person, whatever the person is doing, you are, you know why. Ask. So only, not. A contentious person might have other issues. No, they're prideful. They will humble themselves because, again, you test it out and you see, notice, you can't get a word in. You can't say nothing to them because they just keep yapping away. They're going to tell you. They're going to tell you. You're saying, yeah, 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 but I hear what you tell me, but that's not what happened. And they're already off to the races. Instead of saying, I don't know what happened, but... um. I'm going to investigate because probably there's a plausible reason. You know, somebody, I call somebody and they didn't call me back. And I have to tell myself, I don't know why. And so I talked to the person two days later. The person said, oh man, you can't imagine what happened. I just, I, this happened, that happened. It's just like a whole bunch of stuff that fell apart on me. I'd be like, wow, I'm really sorry. And whatever I was asking them was not that important in comparison to what was going on with them. But I could get so angry. 
And I could be thinking, man, two days the person didn't call me back. They didn't respond to me. And I'm so mad. And then when I found out what happened to them, I was like blown away. I'm like, man, you don't even have to answer me. Forget about what I asked you. Whatever I was calling you for, I was unimportant right now in comparison to what you're telling me. So tell me more. But when you're full of yourself and you think people need to cater to you and it's all about you and you just fit. It's me, 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 me. You're not humble. So only by pride comment. Only by pride comment contention. But with the well-advised is wisdom. Tell me more. Explain to me. What are you saying? You're saying such a... And you'll be shocked many times when a person will explain something. You'll be like, wow, I just learned something there. But were you quick to like jump at somebody and start to tell them? You're like, how are you going to tell me? You didn't know if I'm investigating. Uh, sometimes when I ask a question, I say to a person, actually, I'll be telling you this. I've been thinking about this for months. So what I just said to you, in an introductory, summarized way, you need to ask me some more questions before you start writing them out. Because I've probably been thinking about it. I've been thinking about this thing for months. So ask me some questions. And after I've explained it to you in detail, then you can start talking. But don't let pride get in your way. Because you don't know. I've been investigating this and talking about this for a while, or at least to myself. So now that I say it, probably it's the first time I said it out loud, but I have some time with it. I've been toying with this thought. And so it's important to know. Because sometimes somebody says something, they say it off the cuff. Sometimes they have work it out in their mind. I'm probably it's not a hundred percent foolproof, but probably it's eighty five percent, ninety percent rock solid. And you just start going, you know, acts. But it's pride. So you bring me a contentious person, I guarantee. I, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you, I've never met a person that is angry. And you know the worst situation is when a male and a female who are angry, contentious, brawling marry. You don't know how this happened, but it's like as I said, lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Well, it does sometimes, and sometimes it happens at the right there in front of the, the church with the pastor, with the court official. And the two people who are brawling and angry and contentious, the two of them get married. And now you don't have one trying to calm the other down. The two of them is feeding each other, and they go at it with each other. You're like, wow. It's like they found each other, a match made in hell. So you, I've never met a person that's brawling, contentious, nagging, that has proven this Bible text wrong, wrong. Never. And this is just me with my short years on this earth. And imagine for 3,000 plus years after this was written, nobody has ever proven this wrong. That a person who is contentious is not a prideful person. You go online, you go and watch videos with angry people who say they're conspiracy theorists, and you're going to find very quickly that they're full of themselves. And that's the problem. They don't, and that's why they get sued all the time and stuff like that, because they say things without properly investigating to prove, to know for a fact if what they're saying is right. They just run and start to get angry about things that they don't know nothing of, because they're full of themselves. It is pride that's doing it. But when you're well advised, you know to humble and take in information. Last verse here, Proverbs 18, verse 6. Proverbs 18, verse 6. It's important to encourage a person to seek knowledge and answer. Notice here, a fool's lip enter into contention and his mouth call it for strokes a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth call it for strokes so somebody said why is that every time I open my mouth somebody want to punch me in it because you're foolish you're foolish only a fool would say what you just said so encourage that person to seek knowledge and answer instead of always encourage a person to run your mouth ask question See, how can I get help? What can I do? Blah, blah. Just ask something. But a fool's lip enter into contention. You're not going to meet a person who always have in fights and you're going to say that person is sensible. Think about it again. I can, I can show you. Say, go on this website. Watch this person. Watch him being a fool. They're just running them out about stuff that something happened today and before the day's end, they have an opinion on it. You know, give it some time. Give it a few days. You'll be surprised within 24 hours to 48 hours how much come out about each event. And then now you run your mouth. But fools live always just running and talking before they give it time. Sometimes I could be looking at things for months and I don't say anything because after a while, other people start investigating and more come out. And then I say something. And when I say it, you know, there's enough evidence to back what I'm saying. But a fool, oh, they, they, they're first. Something happened, they're first to want to comment. You'll be like, how are you commenting already? 
This thing is just hitting the press. Not even the press as an opinion. You have an opinion, you're a fool. And you know what's going to happen? Arguments are going to come. And it's going to come for strokes because somebody's going to... I'm going to punch you for saying that. Because you don't know. But when you say something that you're well advised and it's been, you know, worked out, God bless you, man. You find that the contention doesn't come. And so that's the way to deal with it. Either personally or helping a person say, hey, look, you need help. You need to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. The Lord will bless you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your blessings in our lives. We thank you for your wisdom. Pray, Lord, to may be with us as we go through the rest of this day. May we always seek, dear Lord, not to be fools. Always seek, dear Lord, not to say things and do things to cause contention, but to humble ourselves in thy sight and to always seek, dear Lord, clarification. Seek to understand more what a person is saying before we conclude and start contending and fighting. Bless us, dear Lord, and may your spirit be upon us that we might all practice these principles and be better people reflecting thy character this is our prayer in jesus name amen well thanks again for being with me here on revive form radio looking forward to talking to you monday where we shall do motivation until then i pray that you may continue walk with the king mm -hmm.